to try and take this record that has stood for 16 years. Joshua chapter guy. He'll be following the familiar figure of Roy Hruenweg. His job to do the early pacemaking duties, couple of national titles for the Dutchman. And it's Sonia, once again, it's it, this is this is brutal. But how much confidence do you think he would have taken from from the 5,000? Arguably, is weaker distance if he has one. Um, yeah, well, he's more known for the longer distances, world cross country, 10,000 meters, um, winning the world championships. And again, this is you know. It's a bit of a test of concentration here and relaxation from the early stages, you know, to set the pace, but to do it, you know, in an even way. And Joshua has asked, unlike um, Gide, she he has asked for a much more even pace. He wants to go exactly 63 seconds each lap. And they are bang on, just 63.04 for the first lap. And this is the thing, you don't want to panic too much and try to gain time early, particularly in the 10,000 meters. It is a long way to go, 24 laps at a track to go now. And, you know, the first half of the race is really just about getting there as easy as you possibly can and then start to work. Um, this race, it's actually kind of breaking into two already. We have um, the second pack is going for to try and get some of the athletes to run under 27 minutes um, but from the front we have um yeah Roy Roy, Roy is, Hornweg he's going to lead out for um, 1500 meters and you know take the 63 second lap and then he's followed by Matthew Ramsden who's had an absolutely fantastic season this year um, athlete from Australia um, he's broken PBs over 3,000 meters, 5,000 meters, 334 for 1,500 meters, and he will hope to get as far as 4,000 meters tonight. This is really good from Roy. He works with the NN running team, who along with the expertise of the Globo Sports Communication, they have put this race on. And as I mentioned, if you're just joining us, we really hope you're enjoying this coverage free of charge around the world. The organizers decided they did not want to make a penny from tonight. They felt this needed to be a celebration of distance running. And Sonia, we said at the beginning, this is a really important night for our sport because athletics doesn't always get the opportunity to sit front and center. And it is tonight and, and with the best of intentions from everybody involved and, and what a night already and what a start this evening. It's been an absolutely fantastic start to the night and you know it's a way of highlighting individual athletes oftentimes in track meets we have so many events going on track and field events and you know great performances can get lost in, in the night um, but here we have the chance to highlight great athletes and elevate them you know to their greatness and showcase you know what indiv individual athletes can do and you know they don't just do it by themselves that's why we have all these pacemakers here tonight to help them out a lot of these athletes they work in teams who help them with their training and then other athletes you know some of these athletes are the best athletes in the world some of the best athletes in their countries who are giving up their time to come and help here tonight because that's what it takes you know pacemaking is not an easy job these days you know you need some really quality athletes to be able to maintain these paces and to help athletes to push the limits of you know the fastest times that anyone's ever run in the world before and you know as the years go on that gets harder and harder to do well there's a real electricity around this tiny stadium i can promise you that there are people crowded round on the walls on street level just a reminder the stadium is in a, a sort of fantastic natural amphitheater i believe we're on the site of the former riverbed and there are man-made lakes palm trees it's are a we... fantastic place to come and exercise 62.9 he's we... okay at the moment and we've just hit our first significant landmark for many people the 412 mile uh, 413 is the pace that we're looking for um, five miles to go um, in old language um, and Matt Ramsen it's his job now to get us you know to 3,000 meters we're looking at 752 um, and then we'll see how far he can push on from there but you know the pacemakers you know the 
the further they can go at the more even pace and the more they can carry Joshua, you know, to the point where he will then have to start working himself. And, you know, that's probably when he will have to start looking at the lights here as well. And they are just, you know, running right on world record pace right now. Um, they're not trying to get too far ahead of it because it's a long way to go. And, you know, you just don't want to burn the energy too early in the race and save, you know, something for those last laps. Yeah, no, I think we should clarify as well that Joshua's got to run a massive 31 second PB. So people might say, well, hang on a minute, surely that's far too big a margin. But he needed a 22 second PB to take the 5,000 meter record. And he managed that with room to spare. So it's, it's an interesting challenge. And it's a mark of how confident he's feeling that the fact that he's never run within half a minute of Kenanisa Bekele's record doesn't bother him. Um, no, well, you know, I think he just wouldn't be looking at the record per se or what he has done himself in the past, but more, you know, focus on what he's done this year and, um, you know, what that equates to. And, you know, on paper, you know, he should, you know, be definitely within range of breaking this record. But, you know, it is a long way out here. It's a, it's, it's a tough, tough event, you know. It's quite different over 5,000 metres, you know, there's less laps you have to run by yourself. I think here he may be left with a lot more laps to run by himself and, you know, he will be actually after running at, you know, such a fast pace for a longer distance as well. Um, but he's trained for this, he's prepared for this and I'm sure he knows what to expect. But they are just running nicely on the pace right now, staying even, not trying to get too far ahead um, and, you know, pick up the pace in those lat saving something for the end which is what he needs when he's going to be by himself and when he's be looking at those um blue staying ahead of the green lights we're bang on it right now yes he he's going to have to answer some savage questions i was talking to his coach Andy Ruter. had a fascinating hour with him the other day in the team hotel and, and he was saying that joshua has a massive appetite for pain and that's and that's that's what he needs he says i don't really need to equip him with any mental tools to try and cope with the pain he's he's just he's just born with a gift to take punishment and that's what he's going to need to be able to do tonight absolutely and he's got nicholas um kip career here waiting to take over from matt ramson um once they get past three three and a half thousand meters um and he has actually got the fastest time in the world this year for ten thousand meters at 26.58 um, just a few weeks ago, so he knows what it's like to go the full distance. So he'll be aiming to run a little bit quicker than he's run just a few weeks ago and um, help Joshua to get to a point where he's confident that he can take it home. Matt Ramston's done a good job here. 7.52. They are absolutely bang on world record pace at the moment. There's uh, Roy Huenvig just in the foreground he'll be delighted with what he's seeing so far there's such a there's such a spirit of generosity amongst distance runners which sounds like a cliche but these guys and, and the men and women in the crowd who've run a 5,000 and 10,000 at whatever pace they know this hurts and you just have to look at how hard Ramson is working here you know he's just got himself an extra 200 meters there and that's just one third into the race you know, there is still a long way to go here. Um, Joshua is looking pretty relaxed. Um, Nicholas is also looking relaxed. And that is what you have to maintain for as long as possible into the race. Because it's, you know, the, the laps are adding up here and they are on pace. But I, I agree with you, he needs Nicholas to keep going as long as he possibly can. They've actually moved a little further up the trail of green lights. It's five in total. And then the front of the blue lights is set at eight metres in front of world record pace to help the pacemakers. But uh, Kip Career Camelli, to use both of his uh, surnames, he's a 12.51 man, 
third in the national cross country at the start of this year in Kenya, and that is absolutely no mean feat. Now, the last lap was 62.9. This, this is good so far for yeah, Joshua Cheptegei, 62.4. This is what he needs, Sonia, it's metronomic. Yeah, just to be able to maintain that even pace, you know, a little bit under 63, a little bit over 63, you know, you just to keep that going um, for as long as possible. And, you know, I'm sure that um, Joshua Cheptegei, he will be able to pick up the pace over the last four laps, but he just wants to get there feeling good. And right now they are working really well together. I think um, Nicholas, he's not pushing too hard yet. He's, um, we'll be, the, the next key marker that we'll be looking for is the 5,000 meter mark, you know, to be passing to in 13.07. You know, that would be the national record in many countries. It's uh, pretty astonishing that he'll be coming close to, you know, 13 minutes at the halfway split. I know, and, and I guess, again, we, we chatted over breakfast the other day. 13.06, 13.07 is, is ludicrous. As you say, that's world class, but if you look at the world record he set over 5,000 metres, 12.35, he's got the knowledge, bang on at the moment, he's got the knowledge that 12.35 He's run for, for, for 5,000. So if he goes through in 13.05, he can say to himself, I've run half a minute quicker than this, so, yeah, so I should be comfortable. Yeah, I think, you know, it's you know like watching the women's 5,000 meters. When you break it down into the laps, it's a very achievable, The you know, the 400 meter times, the 1,000 meter times, the halfway times, even 3,000 meters. Um, but when you put it all together and add it all up, it does take a toll. And, you know, that's where... He just has to continually maintain that constant, even pacing. Um, and, you know, you can just see here the wave lights, they're keeping track of it. It's, it will be interesting to talk to the athletes after and see if they have been helped by these lights or even notice them there. I, I think Gide definitely did, by the way, because she glanced back over her left shoulder a couple of times as she was hugging the bench. 63 on the nose for that one, 600 meters to go before we reach halfway. And there were a couple of little moments there where there were some gaps appearing uh, between the Kenyan and the Ugandan, but Joshua Cheptegei has closed that up really nicely. We mentioned Uganda and we're hoping that there'll be many people tuning in in a very proud, beautiful country. So if you are watching from that brilliant East African nation, then Oliochia, I hope you're having a great time. And, and it's, it's refreshing, Sonia, that with the likes of Stephen Kipricic taking the the marathon for Uganda in 2012 in, in London. And then we had Dorcas Inzakuru back in 05, winning the women's steeplechase. And Nakai won the women's 800 last year as Cheptegei took the 10,000. The Ugandans are beginning to become a force to be reckoned with in global distance running. It's not just about the Ethiopians and Kenyans anymore. No, it's more African nations, you know, seeing what their neighbors are doing and stepping up to the mark and, you know, so particularly you see it in the World Cross Country when you have the team event and the athletes are out there and they're encouraged by what they see from, you know, great athletes in the country. They want to be a part of this. And, um, you know, Joshua, you need someone like Joshua as an inspiration to athletes to look up to. And, um, you know, he's, he's doing it that just tonight now he's really looks like he's um, sitting in the back pocket of Nicholas Trip, <laughs> Kip career tonight and he's getting he's as close as can be there now I just wonder if um, he had 1307 73 that is bang on you know exactly what they need at halfway um, you know to run the same again will be the world record um, so just to maintain this even pace and be able to pick it up but it looks like he's going to have to go a long way, a long run for home right now. It's going to be 12 laps for Joshua Cheptegei. Yes, is the Kenyan, himself. is he going to stop? I think he's just about had enough. This is the loneliness now of the long distance runner. Nicholas Kipkaria Kameli is carrying on, but his duties of towing Joshua Cheptegei around to a world record have come to an end. Chapter guy is now on his own. He's being roared on, though, by a growing number of people sitting 
on the city wall. You might just be able to get a glimpse of them there to the left of the Estadi del Turia. I tell you what, this isn't the biggest stadium and we've never seen a world record here until tonight, thanks to Latessa Betguide. I think a whole host of athletes would love to come and compete here. It's not huge. We're not talking about 40,000 people, even without the COVID restrictions, but there's an intimacy and there's a real atmosphere about this stadium and, and, and the way it's sort of formed in this Coliseum shape with people all around on the city walls. I think this is a cracking place for athletics. It's, it's a stunning stadium. Um, you know, the, the location and the, the positioning of it is unbelievable. You don't see many tracks like this anywhere in the world where they are dropped down a level. So the shelter here is, you know, on a windy day, it would probably be not so, it would be very sheltered. But, you know, the conditions here tonight are absolutely perfect. Um, Joshua, I'm sure he was hoping Nicholas would go a little bit further. They were hoping maybe 7K. So he really now has to make his mind up and really go for this. You know, it's it's not an easy task that he has set for himself here tonight. Um, and he's on his own right now, but he is in running with the world record pace. He's right in the middle of it. I suppose he, he's focusing on the blue lights, if he can see them. And, you know, I think, you know, if this you know is such a help to the athletes tonight this could be a new you know development for athletics you know to, it's, it's something new to help us to push the barriers that you know many athletes see there at all levels and you know what i just noticed a little almost imperceptible acceleration there because i think he sensed that this is getting a little bit tight it's only half a second mm -hmm. or so but He's still looking OK at the moment. He's got to keep hammering these laps out. So much effort, so much work with Adi Ruta in Uganda. And I, I, I think it's really brave of him to have won the World Junior title and then gone over to a big training group in Kenya and got in touch with, with Global and got in touch with NN Running and said, look, this isn't really working for me. I'm, I'm happy to hurt myself. I'm not after an easy ride but some of these long 40k runs that these older marathon runners are doing and he was a teenager at the time they're not working for me and my body's not reacting i want to go home can you help me find a coach who can work with me back in uganda because that's where i think i can get the best out of myself and boy oh boy did that turn out to be a great decision because since then he's added the world senior title the cross-country title and a world record called the world best over 15k so he that gives you the impression, Sonia, this guy has, has got maturity and he's got emotional intelligence as well as a racing brain. He understands what he needs to get to the top. He does, and that when you get that positive feedback and, you know, you set goals and targets for yourself and you achieve them, then you get a lot of momentum into, your, you know, the training that you're doing, the racing that you're doing, your, your whole belief and confidence grows and you feel that anything is possible. You know, you start to believe that you can do anything. And I think that's what Joshua has done here. You know, he set the 5,000 meter world record uh, 12.35. It looked so easy at the time, particularly the last four laps of that race that I think he truly believes that, you know, he can achieve things that seem impossible. And he looks like he is sitting on these lights here tonight. Now he's jumped onto the blue, which is great to see with eight laps to go. 17.50 and that's well, well ahead of the schedule here that we're looking at. 62.5 for that lap. And that may be the reason why he is on the blue lights, which remember are indicative of the pacemakers being seven or eight meters ahead of world record pace. He's trying to achieve something really special here. Kenanisa Bekele's world record has stood since 2005. Only three men have ever run inside 26.30. Bekele obviously with the world record and the legendary cross country runner, Paul Turgat setting the world record and Haile Gabri Selassie as well. And he's picking up again here. He's giving himself some room for error towards the end of the race. It, it's a glittering list of men to have run under 26.30 and he's giving himself a great chance of joining them. He has and he once again has hit one of his target times over on the back straight with four thousand, with seven laps to go. So just under 3,000 meters to go here. And now he is definitely within the range that, you know, it starts to feel easy when you're in the single digits, you know, he's 
getting around there. It'll soon be down to two kilometers. Two kilometers to go will really break it down in his head that he can actually do this. So I think he really has to concentrate. He can actually um, focus a little bit on the athletes that he is catching and passing here now. That will give him a little bit of motivation to, you know, push himself and to catch up and to go by quickly. And, um, you know, while also maintaining contact with the pace here and check, I'm sure he will be keeping an eye on the clock every time he comes around. If you're a fan of the history of great sport, then what about the list of names he's trying to join as a 10,000 meter world record holder? Emil Zatopek first broke the six and a quarter mile world best in Ostrava. There's a statue of him there. I was there for the Continental Cup and had a photo beneath it back in 1949. Then you move into the 60s. The legendary Australian distance runner, Ron Clark, who got a bronze in 64 and then famously needed oxygen at the high altitude of 68. He's been a world record holder. Lassie Viren in the 70s, a four-time Olympic champion, did the double in 72 and 76. And then you move in to the likes of the 90s. Three times Haile Gabri Selassie has held this record. Paul Turgat as well, all of them with glittering careers in cross country and track and the road. Turgat, the first man under 205 for the marathon. Gabri Selassie was the first man under 204. Both of them proud holders of the 10,000 meter world record before it passed to Kenanisa Bekele, a six time long course cross country world champion and a triple Olympic champion, 5,000 and 10,000 meters. It's a glittering list of who's who in terms of the all-time greats. And that's the kind of company that Joshua Cheptegei would be in if he can somehow keep this going. And I'll tell you what, Sonia, he's getting a standing ovation from the crowd here, even though he's got five to go. And he's just passed through with two kilometers to go, and he is still on world record pace. In fact, he is under one world record pace. You know, as each lap goes by, he's just going to get more and more motivation to belief and confidence that he is able to do this. And right now, he is still maintaining that relaxation that we saw in Monaco over the 5,000 meters. Um, I think for you know someone who's a 5,000 meter runner, a 10,000 meter runner, when they see one mile to go, one lap or four laps of the track to go, that is a small, you know, it's, it's not something that is unachievable for them. They're kind of what I would call within range of really racing to um, achieve the record. This is absolutely incredible. Wherever you're watching this in the world, I hope you're enjoying this. Distance running, free to view anywhere on the planet because we're watching something really, really special here. This was the NM Valencia World Record Day. We've seen one, surely. We can't be on the way to seeing another, can we? 62.9, lap after lap after lap. He's edging ever closer to a place in the history books. He's only run twice this year, Sonia, and on both occasions he's broken a world record. World 5K on the roads back in February in Monaco, then the 5,000 meters on the track in August. If he does this though, there's such a mystique, there's such a majesty about the 10,000 meters, 25 soul-destroying laps of a track. I think this would beat the other two. I think this would be the key run of the year, and I'd actually rank this alongside winning the 10,000 last year in Doha. This would be some achievement. I think it would just be another stamp of approval of his greatness, and it's hard to even hear what's going on here now with three laps to go. And this is very, very possible. We're 23 of, that's another 63 second lap there. I mean, it's just like, but knocking off these laps even after even after even and I, I can see a sprint coming for the last lap so I'm I don't know I think we can start <laughs> we want to stand up and start celebrating right now but with one kilometer to go you know this is where you know the concentration may turn into racing and you know there's a number of athletes that he's lapping here to chase 23 36 with one kilometer to go he is 1.5 seconds under his projected time which is well under world record pace so this is definitely it's been the world record day in Valencia today it's been named that this could be a holiday after tonight <laughs> this is so exciting 
We really hope you enjoyed this. I just can't stop smiling. I can't believe what we're in the process of witnessing here. If, if he can keep it going, two laps to go. And if you're watching this with a, a little brother or a sister or a son or a daughter or a niece or a nephew, get them down to your local athletics track. This is the most accessible, friendly sport in the world. If you can run or jump or throw, you can be a world-class athlete. There is no barrier where our sport is concerned. And these are the kind of images that inspire the next generation of global stars, not only perhaps in Uganda or across Africa, but around the world. He is standing as a symbol of all that is great. He's pouring his heart and soul into this record attempt into this journey to greatness that he is relentlessly pursuing with painful session after painful session and he's tantalizingly close now to doing something he may not have thought was possible six or seven years ago the world junior champion the world senior champion has 400 meters to go can he do it can he keep it going he's ahead of the green lights at the moment another 63 but 63.8 he's getting tired but he's flying the flag brilliantly for Uganda. He comes from the Sabini tribe, who traditionally have a low standing in Ugandan culture, but he's rewriting what's possible in his country. He's a shining example of all that is possible with determination. He's a slight man, but he's big in personality, big in talent and big in ambition. This has been absolutely incredible here. Coming round. He's just got to keep driving. Can Anita McKayley's time, 26.17. We've seen one world record. I think we might be about to see another. This has been absolutely fantastic. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing to attention. It's a standing ovation from everyone here. He has roared with the heart of an African lion. He's delivered. It's a world record for Joshua Chetagai, the Commonwealth champion. The world champion is the fastest man in history, over six and a quarter miles. And this is a night that will never be forgotten by any of us who were privileged enough to be here. He has shone like a star in the night sky of Spain. That was incredible. That was outstanding. I mean, the, the pressure and the expectation for Joshua to come here tonight, a whole day in the city of Valencia built around him and also on Letzenet Gide, you know, to have the two of them come here and deliver on what was named a world record day is outstanding. It's something that, you know, we all wanted it to happen. But we were fearful, you know, that it wouldn't. But to see it actually happen in front of our eyes is unbelievable. That is just, you know, solidifying his greatness over the past years, running the world championships, world record, world cross country champion. And he just made it look easy. He just got faster. I knew those last four laps, he was just gonna get faster and faster, but he did get tired going into the last lap, but he was able to carry it through and come home with a world record, a successful year like you couldn't have imagined with you know everything being cancelled. It is just outstanding. Uh, I'm absolutely speechless after tonight. It, it was just, it was so emotional. There are people wearing their cameras out here. Everybody around the stadium standing, trying to get a glimpse of the man of the moment. There's a lovely embrace for Roy Huenweg who started the pacemaking so well. This was the last 400 meters. This was the run for destiny. Zatopek, Clark, Viren, Gabri Selassie, Turgat, Bekele, and now that list has added to it Joshua Cheptegei and surely Sonia O'Sullivan. There's only one thing left for him to do, and that is turn a world gold and a Commonwealth gold into Olympic gold. If we have an Olympic Games next year in Tokyo, what a race that will be between him and the defending champion, Sir Mo Farah. And you'd have to put him down as favourite after what we've seen here tonight and across this year. Not just one world record, not two, but three. What a year. Three races, three world records, no championships. There's a lot to look forward to when the Olympic Games eventually take place and hopefully they will next year. 
Oh, what a night. It's been such hard work for the organisers. There have been so many health and safety hoops to jump through, but they've done it. And Joshua is just about getting his breath back. He's heading over shortly to the former junior international high hurdler, Marlene Vink Rennings, who will very shortly have a word with him. Has he got enough breath back? I think he has. Joshua Cheptegei getting in position on our socially distanced microphone. Let's hear from the man of the moment. Joshua, congratulations. This is an amazing performance. Can you tell us how you feel? Yeah. Uh, first of all, of course, you know, I wanted to leave the expectation of uh, Valencia, the team, which was Valencia World Record Day. So it feels really well to me that I fulfill my, my dream. You have shown many amazing performances. What is this performance? What does it mean to you? I think uh, it means uh, something great to me. Uh, you know, we are trying to write history into the track again. People, uh, of course, we want to make people to know that the track is still exciting and uh, we want to give it all, you know, and, and uh, so that uh, the sports lovers in the world can have uh, the benefit of the time by seeing us, you know. And what does it mean uh, in this year of COVID? You know, we live in a difficult situation now with COVID, but uh, this event can still give us joy, can still give us hope for tomorrow. Knowing that uh, we need to take precautions to defeat the virus, we need to be careful, we don't need to be reckless again, and uh, for sure the world will return back to normal. It will not be any soon because most of the people are not, fail, uh, not uh, following the precautions and the SOP. So we need to tell them again that we want to get back to normal. And the best way we can do that is uh, when all of us get concerned about uh, coming back to normal. You said in your press conference that you want to be the greatest. Does this bring you closer? I think this is just like uh, it lays a foundation of what can still happen and what I want to achieve in the years to come. Thank you very much, Joshua. And please celebrate tonight this beautiful world record. Come on, come thank you, for, thank you, guys. Thank you for the support. Thank you. What a talismanic figure he is turning out to be for this great sport of athletics, proudly taking the Ugandan flag. We can hardly believe, Sonia O'Sullivan and I, what we've seen tonight. We just can't stop smiling and laughing. It's been absolutely incredible. This Stadi Del Turia has borne witness here to not just one world record, but two. Unbelievable. The classic photos. 26-11 on the nose. That record had stood for 15 years to one of the greats. Well, he said he wants to become the top distance runner in history. Well, he's giving himself a chance. Well, Joshua was the second world record of the day. If you're just joining us, here's a recap of Gide's world record earlier. So, Letessa Bekide was out to try and take Tiranish de Barber's world record that had stood since 2008. She too produced a moment of history here. 14.06 plus change, just 22 years of age. Silver last year at the World Championship. She promised us she could run 250 after 250 after 250. She delivered, and we finally got a word with her after the race. Congratulations, Lutece Bet. It's an amazing achievement. How do you feel? Thank you very much. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. What does the world record mean to you? Yes, uh, this is a long time of dream and uh, I'm very happy by this competition and uh, it is very big uh, <laughs> for me. How does it feel to, do, to run the world record here in Valencia? Yes, Valencia is very nice uh, place and uh, I like it. <laughs> I like uh, Valencia and uh, I will uh, break for the next time and also 10,000 meters another. 
Hildes, and what does the world record mean to Ethiopia? Yes, uh, it is very nice. I mean, before this is the Tarnash Dibaba record, and then uh, now also in Ethiopia, and I'm very happy. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you to Global Communication also. Thank you to Valencia and for all for all yours. Thank you. He is the king tonight on top of the world and why not? I hope he's allowed a small beer this evening. Possibly not, because he's <laughs> taking part in the World Half Marathon Championships in Kadinia in Poland in a couple of weeks' time. Looking forward to that one, seeing his uh, big debut over the half marathon. But what a night. Sonia, your, your reflections on an extraordinary hour for distance running and for athletics. Absolutely extraordinary. It's been such a special evening. I can't possibly have imagined that this was going to happen tonight. You know, you, you set these things up, you build them up. But, you know, there's always that, you know, uncertainty of what's actually going to happen when the athletes line up and race because you know, you just don't know, but to have the results there tonight, to have those two fantastic races, it will be the most memorable night. For the times that we're living in at the moment, for anybody who was able to be here tonight, to witness it live in the stadium, up on the walls outside the stadium, I think they will remember this for the rest of their lives. And they will all be supporting Joshua at the Olympics next year. And Lutzenet Gide also, of course. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree that there's something just really honest and likeable about Joshua Cheptegei. He says he wants to change the course of secondary education in his country. He's got big ambitions and not just within the framework of distance running. The last 50 metres, he stuck out his tongue. He promised he'd deliver. He's raced three times this year and broken the world record on every single occasion. He will be the toast of Uganda tonight and tomorrow. And when he eventually gets home, there will be the most almighty socially distanced party. We really hope you've enjoyed the action tonight from Estadi Del Turia. Two proud Africans are sitting on top of the world. Natessa Bekide and Joshua Cheptegei have delivered a night none of us will ever, ever forget. Thanks ever so much for your company. See you next time. Goodbye.